dear students uh, this is our 10th lecture on bioorganic chemistry and uh, we are continuing with mechanism of enzyme action and in this lecture uh, we will uh, discuss about acid base catalysis covalent catalysis and metal ion catalysis how these uh, help in enzymatic reactions now first is uh, metal ion catalysis so uh, as uh, you know that uh, many enzymes uh, they require additional metal ions for their activity and uh, an enzyme is called a metallo enzyme uh, if it binds uh, the metal very tightly and if it binds the met uh, metal ion weakly then this is referred as metal activated enzyme so this is how we can differentiate between metallo enzymes and metal activated enzymes so metallo enzyme is where metal is bound to the enzyme very tightly whereas metal activated enzyme is where the metal ion binds to the enzyme very weakly so this is how we can differentiate between the two so uh, the role of metals uh, in case of enzymatic reactions uh, in terms of metal activated enzymes or metallo enzymes is to act as electrophilic catalyst so metals they will always act as electrophilic catal uh, catalyst Uh, they will uh, stabilize the increased electron density or negative charge that can develop during the enzymatic reaction then uh, another potential function of metal ions uh, is to provide a powerful nucleophile at a neutral ph because at neutral ph what will happen it is very difficult to remove this proton but when metal ion is present because of the electrophilic nature of this metal ion this will attract nucleophilic part towards itself and this will develop an active charge metal is having a positive charge and this h ion can be removed very easily so uh, metal ion can increase the acidity of the nucleophile with an ionizable proton and then reactivity uh, of the coordinator uh, the d protonator nucleophile is uh, typically intermediate between uh, that of an unionized and unionized form of the nucleophile Uh, for example uh, carboxypeptidase enzyme uh, contains an active site uh, zinc 2 plus which facilitates uh, deprotonation of uh, water molecule in this manner uh, for example uh, in case of liver alcohol dehydrogenase the uh, enzyme liver alcohol dehydrogenase uh, catalyzes the transfer of uh, a hydride ion from nadh to acetaldehyde in forming ethanol so for example if we are having acetaldehyde because uh, this oxygen is uh, electronegative in nature then metal ion will get uh, coordinated to this oxygen and this will develop a uh, electrophilic uh, carbon will be more prone uh, to attack of the hydride to get it reduced from carbonyl to alcohol so this active site Uh, zinc ion will stabilize the negative charge development on oxygen of the acetaldehyde and the transfer of negatively charged hydride ion to the carbon to form ethanol will be facilitated and then uh, next is acid base uh, catalysis acid base uh, catalysis can be of two types uh, specific acid base catalysis or general acid base catalysis in case of specific acid base catalysis only h positive or hydroxide ions they will accelerate the enzymatic reaction whereas in case of general acid base catalysis any acid or base other than proton or hydroxide ion 
they can accelerate the reaction so this is the difference between specific acid base catalysis and journal acid base catalysis and uh, uh, because of the presence of this journal acid or journal base uh, as catalyst this type of catalysis will increase the rate of reaction ranging from 10 to 100 times so first is acid catalysis uh, specific and journal acid catalysis uh, increase the rate of the reaction by donating a proton uh, or uh, to make a bond formation and bond breaking easier so uh, if we are having uh, say a general acid catalyzed reaction the transition sta uh, state has a uh, partially transferred proton whereas in case of a specific acid catalysis the proton must be fully transferred to the reactant before the beginning of the slow step for example if you see this one uh, in this ester when this react with the proton we will be having uh, this type of intermediate and as this is a specific acid catalysis the nucleophile attack a fully protonated carboxylic group before the slow step so before this nucleophilic attack takes place the proton has been attached to the substrate so we are having a fully protonated carboxyl carboxyl group before this slow step so this is an example of specific acid catalysis because here proton is involved and then this will lead to this intermediate stage and then this will lose proton to neutralize into this tetrahedral structure and this tetrahedral structure will interact with uh, SD, under SD condition will be converted into this intermediate and ultimately we will get the hydrolysis product alcohol and carboxylic acid will be formed and this type of uh, enzymatic reaction will be uh, a specific acid catalysis reaction because here the nucleophile has attacked a fully protonated carboxyl group before the slow step then uh, general uh, acid catalysis is here proton is transferred to the reactant during the slow step of the reaction so nucleophile is attacking the substrate and proton is being shifted before the slow step this one is the slow step so this is a general acid catalysis because proton is not directly involved in this case Similar uh, is uh, the base catalysis. Base catalysis again can be specific or general base catalysis. Uh, in general base catalysis reaction, the proton is removed from the reactant during the slow step of the reaction. Whereas in the specific base catalysis, proton is completely removed from the reactant before the beginning of the slow step of the reaction. So this will take place during the slow step of the reaction. This will take place before the beginning of the slow step of this reaction. So this is the difference between general base catalyzed reaction or specific base catalyzed reaction. Then uh, general base catalysis. Uh, this is the example for nitrophenyl acetate hydrolysis takes place in presence of midazole and water water is acting as a nucleophile and this nucleophilic character of water is facilitated by this midazole this will remove this proton and this will become a better nucleophile so proton transfer to midazole in the transition state facilitates the hydroxyl attack of the substrate uh, on the substrate substrate is 4 nitrophenyl acetate in this case so this is how this will be converted into this intermediate and which will lead uh, ultimately to formation of products so uh, hydrolysis of this ester will take place by 
general base catalysis mechanism where this amidazole will be acting as a general base. Then amino acids uh, they can act as general acids also and general bases also because of the presence of uh, uh, either uh, protonated acids or uh, negatively charged acid. For example, if we are having a spartic acid say as the amino acid residue, uh, when uh, this is present in this form, this will act as a general acid. When this is present in carboxylate ion form, this will act as a base, this will attract proton, this will lose proton. Then uh, in case of uh, cysteine, this is the uh, general acid, this is the general base. In histidine, this is the general acid, this is the general base midazolium ion. In serines, alcohol group is the general acid. Uh, alkoxy group is the general base. In tyrosine, phenolic part is the general acid. Phenolate ion is the general base. So, anything uh, which can donate proton is a general acid. Anything which can accept proton is a general base. The next is covalent catalysis. So, uh, if we compare uh, say uncatalyzed chemical reactions and enzyme catalyzed chemical reactions. So, in uncatalyzed substrate, one substrate will react with another substrate and uh, the covalent bond between these two will break and a new covalent bond will be formed like this. And uh, in case of enzymatic reaction, the first this substrate will interact with the enzyme to form a stable enzyme substrate complex with the removal of one part. So, here a covalent bond between enzyme and one part of the substrate will be formed. And then this enzyme substrate complex co uh, as covalent intermediate will interact with another substrate to give us the product and enzyme will be generated back. So, if the enzyme catalyzed reaction is to be faster than, than the uncatalyzed uh, uh, reaction, then a scepter group of the enzyme must be better attacking group than Z and better leaving group than Y. So, only then enzyme catalysis in such cases will take place and mechanism of such reaction is uh, called as ping pong kinetic mechanism. So, we uh, will see some examples of uh, covalent catalysis. For example, uh, if we are having uh, this type of enzyme and uh, this uh, phosphorus is electrophilic in nature, this nucleophilic attack will lead to the formation of this type of intermediate and with the removal of this alkoxy part, we can see over here there is a covalent bond formation between this uh, phosphorus and enzyme and phosphoryl enzyme intermediate is formed which will lead ultimately to the formation of products and this is a covalent intermediate and that is why such type of catalysis will be called as covalent catalysis. Similarly, in case of uh, carboxylic uh, compounds uh, the enzyme substrate complex will be formed like this. This acyl enzyme intermediate you can see over here. There is a covalent bond between this X which is part of the enzyme and this substrate. So, this is enzyme substrate covalent intermediate and that is why the reaction passing through such an intermediate is called as covalent catalysis. And similar, uh, similar is in case of uh, these types of uh, glycosyl complexes, uh, there is a formation of a covalent complex between enzyme and the substrate and this is an example of covalent catalysis. And uh, these are some of the examples of covalent intermediate formed uh, between water molecule and second substrate giving the desired product. Uh, for example, if 
chymotrypsin is the enzyme uh, all these uh, uh, they are used for hydrolysis of esters the reacting group here is serine and uh, this will form uh, an enzyme substrate complex uh, with covalent intermediate of this type so this will form an uh, ester group similarly if uh, this is the reacting group then we will get these types of covalent intermediate then then again serine in case of uh, alkaline phosphatase uh, phosphoglucomutase then these types of covalent intermediates they are formed during the reaction so uh, in all these uh, types of uh, active sites of the enzymes uh, there are over uh, 100 enzymes uh, they are known to form covalent intermediates during uh, catalysis for example histidine we will have this type of covalent intermediate and in case of aldolase uh, decarboxylase uh, amino group is the reacting group and shim bases they are formed as the covalent intermediate so these types of intermediates they are covalent intermediates because they form an enzyme substrate uh, uh, complex which is covalent in nature then another example is formation of equivalent intermediate in glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase reaction uh, when uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate uh, reacts with enzyme uh, this is the reacting uh, sh is the reacting part we will have this type of uh, enzyme substrate complex which is formed in uh, uh, covalent uh, co uh, formed as covalent acyl cysteine intermediate and uh, this reacts with nad plus to give us this type of stable uh, hemithioacetyl and uh, covalent acyl cysteine intermediate is formed and this can undergo phosphorylation uh, through this thioester intermediate uh, by the nucleophilic attack of the phosphate uh, to give us uh, the desired product that is carboxylic acid phosphoric anhydride product 13 uh, bis phosphoglycerate is formed as the product uh, through this reaction and again this uh, example is uh, an example of covalent catalysis which is formed through covalent intermediate thank you very much